So some people have asked me, why am I doing these videos? And there's really only one reason. I'm not getting paid, I'm not making a dime. I do this one, because I love it. And two, because I want to empower you to do your own service on your ski and not rely on a dealer or a mechanic. I'm gonna take you through each step. I'm gonna give you all the proper torque values and we're gonna do this by the book, as they say. All right, so we've hit 50 hours on the ski and that means it's time to do our exhaust filter maintenance. Now, some people might be a little bit afraid of doing this maintenance, but trust me, it's not that difficult. I'm gonna take you through step by step I'm going to show you exactly what parts you need to, and tools you need to get it done. So make sure you always use genuine Kawasaki gaskets. Don't cheap out and buy the Windorosa gaskets. Maybe they're fine. I don't know. I'm never taking the chance uh, with my Yamahas, with my Kawasaki's. I only buy genuine gaskets, parts, and components. Um, of course, if you're going aftermarket, you know, the guys at K-Speed make uh, incredible uh, really well tested components, so they're probably the only ones I'd trust um, other than genuine factory parts So first you're going to need two of these exhaust filter gaskets. These go on either side of the filter And then you have your main exhaust pipe gasket So the first step is you got to remove the engine cover if you've watched my videos, you'll see my thumb nut mod I removed the acorn nuts these are stainless steel, really high quality thumb nuts. I did do a video on that. This is a, I think when you buy the ski, this is one of the first things you should do because uh, I remove this cover every time I ride. I, I wash down the engine, I spray down the engine. And if you uh, are at the boat ramp or, or at on um, the sandbar or something and, and you need to do an inspection, uh, removing these is extremely easy. And I think it should have come with them from the factory. Maybe they'll listen to me someday. So here's the engine. This skis, you can see it's it's a little wet. And this isn't water, this is this is oil that I spray. I use a Lear corrosion block. And I spray down, I wash down everything with salt away. I dry everything off with a rag. You can see my bilges. I don't know if you can see down there, but it's perfectly clean. I, you could eat off my engine. I keep it. I keep it very, very clean. Um, you don't want any salt. You don't want any mineral buildup. This is your exhaust manifold down here. This is your upper exhaust pipe. This is your lower exhaust pipe. So here's our exhaust filter right here. I've showed this before in some of my videos. Um, I haven't removed this to service it. So you have four bolts right here holding this piece on, and then you have five bolts. Holding this piece on, there is one underneath this plate here. So we'll have to use some Allens to take this off. So I wanted to take a moment to show you your, your prep here. I like to use a towel like this. And make sure to cover all the cosmetic surfaces of the ski. I've got another towel here right on the edge where I'll be leaning. And you want to get this towel to cover the hull, protect your gel coat, protect your decals. Uh, this is, I haven't showed this in other videos, I don't believe, but oil changes, spark plug changes, any type of service where you have tools around the ski, you know, just a small tap can create a crack in the gel coat or a scratch. It's really easy to prep properly and avoid that from happening. Okay, so back to it. All right, so you're going to need a four millimeter Allen socket or Allen wrench. And you're going to remove these two bolts that hold this nameplate in place. All right, this plate should come right off. So the four bolts right here, these are 12 millimeter. You're going to go pop each of those. They are torqued. So you're going to have to loosen them each. Those are 12. You have one more bolt right here. This is a 14 millimeter. And then your four right here are also 14 millimeter. So we're going to remove this hose on the top of the catch can here. 
loosen the clamp and pull the hose off. Don't use a screwdriver to get it off. Some people like to do that. You could damage the hose. We're also gonna disconnect this cooling line right here. Slide the hose clamp back. And you should be able just to pull that off. To make off. this process easier, we're actually gonna remove the catch can. Uh, so we've disconnected these two lines, the top breather line. Now we're gonna loosen these two bolts on the top of the catch can, they're 10 millimeter. You don't have to disconnect the line on the bottom because we we're not gonna remove the can from the ski, we're just gonna set it over there on top of the uh, supercharger uh, pressure relief valve there. There's two washers on each. Be careful not to drop those into the bilge. Fuck. As I said, don't drop the fucking washers. And what did I do? I dropped the fucking washer. It's not lost. All right, so we've got our catch can just out of the way here. You don't have to remove it from the ski if you don't want to. You just set it aside and I'll stick the camera down here. You can see that gives you much better access to everything, including this coupler right here, which we have to remove. The best way to loosen that coupler is gonna be with a seven millimeter socket. So we've loosened our four 12 millimeter bolts. We're now gonna loosen this 14 millimeter bolt right here. That's your first 14 millimeter bolt. Then gonna go back. Loosen each of these 12 millimeter bolts right here. One, be careful not to drop those washers. So it's put, you don't want to mix these up. This one here is shorter than this one here. So you wanna make sure that you remember exactly where they go. So the shorter one goes in the front here. Whereas these longer bolts go in the top. Set this aside. And we've got one more here. That is also a long one. So there's three long ones and one shorter one. The shorter one goes in the front part of the manifold. So now that we've got the exhaust assembly loosened, this is our water temperature sensor right here. Don't unscrew it from the manifold. Um, you can see there's just a uh, I just undid this little, there's a little wrap here holding it in place. There's a 10 millimeter bolt holding that onto the valve cover. We're just gonna unbend that. If I can get you a good angle on it, you could just see here it's a little wire holder. And then right here, you have your connector. We're gonna disconnect this so we could remove this whole assembly out of the ski. Again, don't unbolt the sensor from the exhaust pipe. There's no need to do that. Just um, there's a, a, a zip tie that was right here that I cut and then we just unwrapped this little holder here and we're just gonna, I need two hands so I'm gonna put the camera down. But we're just gonna unclip this, then we're gonna be able to go ahead and pull this exhaust pipe out of the ski. 
So as you can see, we've got the lead for our water temp sensor disconnected. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove this exhaust pipe out of the ski. All right. Make sure that this wire doesn't get damaged. We're gonna wrap it up a little bit right there. Loop it around itself. Don't put your hand on this brass piece. You're gonna wanna lift it by the body of the manifold itself. And there you go, we're removing it from the ski. First hand look at the manifold exhaust pipe assembly itself. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna loosen all of these 14 millimeter bolts. There are four in total. So once you've loosened those four bolts, these two parts will come apart very easily. Now this is the first time you're seeing this. Wow. Check this out, guys. Look at that. That was a couple hours away from breaking out and going down to the water box. Just look at that. Hmm. You could see it was ready to go. The honeycomb is broken off. It is loose. They are not messing around when they say 50 hours. These are only good for 50 hours. Especially if you only ride if you ride in salt like me. I wonder if I could get that out. I got lucky. But that's not supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to look. You could see even that the welds that hold this together failed. So here's our old gaskets. So again, I ride in salt. I flush religiously with salt away and despite my best attempts this item still basically almost failed. If I wouldn't have checked this, if I mean maybe one more, if I would have gone, you know, another couple hours this could have been a, quite the headache. So this is just a wake up call for any of you who have 50 hours or more on your ski and have not done this yet. Do not wait another minute. Kawasaki says 50 hours and they are not messing around. So we've got our manifolds apart. Um, what I've done is I've taken a rag with some acetone and wiped these surfaces down. So I wanted to point out that it, Kawasaki makes it very easy. They put an arrow on the filter. I don't know if you could see that there. There's a big arrow, shows you which way it should go. That points towards the flow of the exhaust, so to the rear of the ski. There's also a green marking that's going to be on, I guess it depends which way you look at it, but facing forward on the ski, that's going to be on the right side, this green part. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up our gaskets. We're going to put those in place. Remember the gaskets have an R. The R goes down on the right side of the mating surfaces. Gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and open our gasket. Here is our new Kawasaki gasket. You can see the dowels. It's gonna be inserted right like that. Then our exhaust filter. Make sure the arrow is pointing towards the back of the ski. That arrow corresponds with the flow of the exhaust, which is backwards. We're gonna go ahead and install that filter, lining up the pins as so. It's now time for the second gasket. Got our first gasket exhaust filter. Now here is the second gasket. Goes right like that. Then we have our lower pipe right here. And that's gonna go just like that. These bolts do not get Loctite. We're gonna start them by hand. 
get them in place. Now before you tighten them, make sure you get them all hand tight and before you torque them rather, make sure you get them all in there and get them hand tight. All right, so you're going to tighten these bolts. I like to do them diagonally. So I'll do that, that one. I don't know if you can see and that one. Then I'll do this one, this one, and this one, then back to that one. So now you've got them hand tight. So now it's time to torque them. The torque value for these is 33 foot pounds. So I like this torsion style wrench. You've seen me use it before. Okay, then again, that's 33 foot pounds. The exhaust assembly back together. We've got our brand new filter in. Again, you're always gonna want, there's a green mark on the filter. That's gonna line up with this marking stamped on the body here. So your green mark is gonna line up with this Allen plug and with this marking. The other side does not have a marking. All right, now this is gonna go back in the ski. Now you'll notice that the gasket here has part of it raised and part of it flat. The flat part goes here against the manifold. Line up. Your exhaust hose down there. Then if you remember, there's four bolts that go right here. This is the shorter. Here's the longer ones. Here's the shorter one. The shorter bolt is gonna go right here. What I'm gonna do is make sure that the gasket is lined up properly, which it is. Then I'm gonna give this a couple turns by hand just to get it seated in place. Just like that. All right, so once you've got these four bolts in right here, these are 12 millimeter. These are each gonna be torqued to 26 foot pounds. And we're gonna torque that to 33 foot pounds. All right, so now that we've got the manifold back in place, everything's been torqued. We're gonna use a seven millimeter socket to tighten up. To tighten up this uh, exhaust hose right here. So you can see that all that blue down there, I made sure to spray everything really well. I use this product, I've shown it on my channel before. This is Lear Corrosion Block, manufactured by Lear Chemical. Uh, spray down everything that's metal with this. Great product. It dissolves corrosion on contact. All right, so we're gonna put our catch can back in place. Uh, you have this hose clamp right here. That's in place. Uh, I'm gonna bolt this on. This is two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so I'm just gonna move this here. All right, so we've got our manifold bolts torqued. This is your water temp sensor. We've got that reconnected right here. That just plugs right back in. We're gonna need a new zip tie for these two wires right here. They just, they, uh, they get tied onto this little pickup loop right there. The next thing we're going to want to do is reattach our catch can and reattach all these hoses and then go ahead and tighten your catch can bolts. Then we are going to reattach this breather hose here from the air box. 
slip that on. And the hose clamp here. All right, that's good to go. Now we have this water line up here. With the clamp, let me get that in place. It's gonna move on me, of course, so it's hard to do it with this. Tighten that, that hose clamp here. Just to give you a quick view here, we've got our manifold back in place. We've got these four bolts torqued 26 foot pounds, 33 foot pounds for this 14, and these four 14 millimeter. We've got our catch can reinstalled. We've got our hose clamps all reconnected. We've got this clamp tightened for this water line. The last thing we have to do now is reinstall our nameplate right here. It could go either way. I think it was the other way before, but since the way I have the skis on the trailer, I'm always looking at it from this angle. So I want it this way. All right, so now we're just gonna fire up the ski. We're gonna make sure that there's no leaks and we will be good to go. So we've run the engine for a few minutes on the hose. We've checked our manifold to make sure there's no leaks at any of our joints. Everything looks good. Final step is to reinstall our engine cover. Again, if you haven't watched my video, you're gonna wanna buy a set of these thumb nuts. 